If you could pick between watching me report on the news or watching an adorable anime virtual YouTuber report on the news, who would you pick? Would you pick me? I hope you would, but I wouldn't be surprised if you picked the other choice. These virtual streamers, virtual YouTubers are a thing. Something that I myself am a bit out of the loop on. I don't entirely understand how that works. Today we're taking a look at an article on Japan Times titled How Virtual Streamers Like Kazuna AI Became Japan's Biggest YouTube Attraction. Their biggest YouTube attraction. That's a pretty big title, at least according to the Japan Times. Let's take a look at that article in just a moment. I'll see you then. Welcome back. Let's get right into it. From Japan Times, they say, Kazuna AI, the most popular streamer in Japan. Not one of the top, not one of the most, but the most popular streamer in Japan is an anatomically exaggerated, perpetually adolescent girl in frilly thigh-high socks and a pink hair ribbon. She is also an entirely virtual character, given life by the actions and voice of an invisible actress. In the home of anime and ghost-in-the-shell futurism, millions now follow Kazuna AI Online. And that success has spawned thousands of copycat acts and a cottage industry catering to so-called virtual YouTubers or VTubers. To find the Western streamer blueprint of young male gamers like PewDiePie and Ninja, Japan has invented a new class of streaming star that's equal parts digital avatar and interactive anime. Now, you know, personally... I don't like how they're interchanging, like, streaming and videos. I mean, they're two vastly different things. Live streaming and creating a video, it's different. Uh, yeah, Ninja does both. PewDiePie does both. So that's fair. But, you know, this article starts off by saying virtual uh, streamers, right? Virtual streamers. And then talks about virtual YouTubers and VTubers. It's just a little nitpick from me. Uh, it would be easier to get their point if they were consistent with that, but... I guess we get their point anyways. Continuing on. Sidestepping the labor-intensive and time-consuming process of traditional animation ill-suited to the fast-paced world of YouTube content, Activate uses Hollywood-grade motion capture equipment to crank out music videos, skits, and game streams just about every day for more than 4 million subscribers. That's pretty intense. Motion cap, mocap, music videos, skits, game streams every day i mean that's some high quality production i mean it's you know it's definitely not as expensive as they said as traditional styles of animation but still man that's clearly a higher production value than for for example me over here but i'm just a little sixty thousand sub channel i'm not a four million channel so let's be fair at least on that one moving on the technology allows kazuna to interact with fans in real time at exhibitions give interviews on live tv and perform in concerts. It's a virtual influencer that can patronize real-world events. That's another problem. How are we going to compete with these V YouTubers, VTubers, when they can literally teleport, more or less, and have a show on the other side of the world? I mean, are we really going to be driven out? Are YouTubers going to be driven out by the AI? Are we going to have some future where literally there's no more YouTube it's going to be AI tube. I mean, already there's memes about that. It's not YouTube. It's WeTube or whatever. YouTube picks who they want to succeed. It's not about their creator anymore. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. Um, that's a whole other discussion. But this is an interesting thing. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I don't know so much about these V streamers, V YouTubers, any of that. Is it serious competition for us? I'm being a bit facetious here. I'm kind of kidding around. I mean, it's not everyone's thing. I don't think everyone's going to want to watch a virtual YouTuber. But you can clearly see the benefits. Let's continue on. They say, the innovation here is in how they combine real-time 3D computer graphics, mocap, and video streaming sites like YouTube to create two-way interactions with audiences, said Aiji Araki, a senior vice president at Gree Incorporated, who heads a division specializing in VTubers. Wow. Well, I don't know what Green Incorporated, or I'm sorry, Gree Incorporated is exactly. Let me look that up really quick. It's kind of curious. Let's see. Gree Inc. A Japanese internet media company with headquarters in Roppongi Hills. Mori Tower in Roppongi, Tokyo. Roppongi. Am I saying that right? I hope. Hopefully I am. That would uh, 
kind of embarrassing if I wasn't. I think I'm, I honestly think it might be your pawn guy. I'm trying to remember because isn't there an anime uh, where it takes place there? I think it's Durarara. I forget though. Anyways, moving on. Kazuna AI debu uh, debuted on YouTube in December 2016 and was responsible for coining the term VTuber. The technology that opened the door for its many imitators arrived that same year in the form of the first commercial virtual reality goggles. Designed to do precise head and hand tracking, the VR kits from Facebook, Inc.'s Oculus and HTC's Core Vive turned out to be the perfect animation rig for VTubers, aspirants on a budget with free-to-use animation engines and 3D models from the likes of Unity Technologies. Anyone could create a virtual puppet studio for cheap in their living room. Oh, really? So if this became a serious issue where I would have to be worried about these VTubers taking over, hypothetically, I could become a virtual anime girl and everything would be fine, I guess. Business would be as usual, except instead of sitting here in a gi, uh, I would be a Miku Hatsune looking girl or something. I don't know, guys. This stuff, what, uh, we're living in interesting times, aren't we? Continuing on, it's no accident that VTubers found fertile ground in Japan. The country has a long history of user-generated content centered on anime and performances by virtual idols like Hatsune Miku. There you go have drawn real-world crowds for more than a decade. While international audiences may prefer more photorealistic characters, which are more difficult to create and animate, their Japanese counterparts raised on comic book heroes have no problems with cartoonish looks. Wait, what? Their Japanese counterparts raised on comic book heroes? That's a weird statement. Um... I mean, yeah, sure, there's some comics in, in Japan, but I would have thought that they would relate it towards, I don't know, anime or manga or light novels or web comics or something like that. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of odd, but okay. The VTuber phenomenon has so far been almost exclusively Japanese. However, its underlying technology and formula of combining popular culture with increased interactivity and thus believability are universal. And Activate already has ambitions to expand its VTuber portfolio beyond Japan. While Japan's global tech leadership may have faded since the days of the Walkman, its trend-setting habits remain, uh, remain strong in the gaming realm. Three out of four gaming consoles sold in the world today are made by Nintendo Corporation and Sony Corporation, while free-to-play mobile games are taking over the globe with monetization techniques pioneered by Japanese companies. And then there are globally beloved game series like Super Mario, Zelda, Monster Hunter, and Pokemon. Anime, another major Japanese cultural export, is a more than 2 trillion yen industry, equivalent to 20 billion USD or so, whose products range from Oscar-winning highbrow works by Hayao Miyazaki to action-packed light entertainment like Battle Angel Alita, which recently got a Hollywood remake. VTubers are a cross between these two pastimes. Market researcher User Local Incorporated estimates that there are now over 9,000 VTuber channels. Let's stop there for a moment. Is that really accurate? That's insane. You're telling me there's over 9,000 VTubers out there? I mean, if that's the case, the industry is already pretty saturated. Well, debatably. I mean, if you compare that to like gaming channels on YouTube, I'm sure it's nowhere near a comparison. I can't imagine how many gaming channels are out there. Uh, but that's just one example. Also vlogging channels, whatever. Whatever it is nowadays, YouTube in general is quite saturated to be fair. Uh, but, you know, what I'm getting at, if there's that many people already in the VTuber space, maybe it's, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it's time for second movers. Maybe the first movers are done on that. I don't know. Continuing. Oh, that's the wrong angle. <laughs> Hold up a second. There we go. So market researcher user Local Incorporated estimates that there are now over 9,000 VTuber channels. The most popular ones are produced by a handful of professional studios like Activate, each managing dozens of characters in the space of less than three years. Virtual streamers have morphed from an obscure subculture to a big business. Kizuna AI can now be found in advertisements for instant cup of noodles and eye drops, appearing at mobile carrier SoftBank Core's launch event and helping the Japan National Tourism's organization's promotional campaigns. A quote, There is no doubt that this will change the future of entertainment, said Hiranao Kunimitsu, the founder of Gumi Inc., an early investor in Activate and about 70 other VR startups. He cautions, however, that for this type of content to resonate outside of Japan, it will have to be adapted to local tastes and sensibilities. 
We're almost at the end of this already. For now, Japanese VTubers are taking the path of least resistance and exploring their characters, excuse me, exporting their characters to China's large and underserved anime market. Activate earlier this year introduced a Chinese version of Kizuna AI, changing its dress and voice, and now it has close to 820,000 followers on the country's Billy Billy video sharing service. Holy smokes. So, Activate basically took Kizuna AI, changed the outfit a little bit, and the voice. They didn't say they changed the name, though, so is it still a Kizuna? Still the same, the same character? The same virtual streamer, virtual tuber, whatever you want to call it? I guess so. And that's already got them 820,000 followers on Billy Billy, which I assume is uh, not as big as YouTube. Now, Billy Billy, I think, is definitely a big company, you know, a big platform in China. So 820,000 followers is still a lot on there. But what I'm getting at is that's, you know, it's not like 820K subs on YouTube, which is still a lot. 820K subs on, uh, or followers on Billy Billy is even more impressive, uh, I guess, you know, if you're looking at the mileage, the amount of users on that, probably less users on there than YouTube as a whole, but still somewhat comparable. Ultimate success for Activate's chief means making it into Hollywood, which is already a well-trodden... Wait, what? Ultimate success for Activate's chief means making it into Hollywood. Why would you want to get into Hollywood? What? Which is already a well-trodden path for Japanese gaming franchises like Resident Evil, Pokemon, Sonic the Hedgehog. Given the world's appetite for Japanese culture, VTubers might not even have to dilute their product very much. And finally, it ends with, I started this virtual entertainment business because I believe it can be done worldwide, Asoka said. Our goal is to become the next generation Disney. Uh, well, that's a little disturbing. Disney nowadays isn't doing so well. Um, so I think, you you know, maybe you want to do a little better than Disney. Although, you know, to be fair, Disney absolutely had massive success. It's just in the more recent years, things are not going as well, it seems, compared comparatively. But it's weird to me that they want to go into Hollywood. Like, if you're having that much success already doing your own thing online, why would you want to regress? Hollywood seems like a kind of an industry that's on the downturn, so to speak, right? I mean, I don't understand why they would want to go to an industry that's not growing when they're in an industry that's growing. Maybe they think that's the next big step. I don't know. Maybe they think that will legitimize it more. You know, if they get the AI into Hollywood, maybe they think that will affect the Western audience more so. Not necessarily the case, but it's interesting that Japanese companies like this are looking overseas, looking abroad and how they can expand here in the West. I mean, that's not necessarily interesting. That's to be expected. But circling that back to what we've discussed many times, is Japan sensitive to issues in the West? Yes and no. Yes and no. You know, I don't want to be one of those people that sits here telling you, Japan will never bend the knee to certain Western ideals. The thing is, those ideals are a minority. You know what I'm referring to. We're, we're, we're nervous that Japan might start pandering to the wrong crowd. That's the only fear with that. And if they want to get involved with Hollywood, they most likely would end up pandering to that crowd. So that's something to keep mind of. But I have a feeling Japan will see Hollywood is not necessarily the place that they want to be. And a lot of us in the West don't even like Hollywood anymore. So they can still get the target market over here without pandering to Hollywood and without pandering to a certain demographic of weird people who can't appreciate Japan for Japan. We will end this segment with a little trivia of Kazuna AI. And I'll probably learn something here too because I don't know that much about her. Let's take a look. She is one of the pioneers. And by the way, this is from virtualyoutuber.fandom.com slash Wikipedia slash Kazuna AI. So hopefully... This is true. I'm assuming it is. They say she is one of the pioneers of the virtual YouTubers fad. While not the first one ever, that's the Japanese English Ami Yamato. Well, okay. AI was the one who originated the myriad of VTubers that exist today, as she proved her style of videos to be successful and popular. Her junior, Kaguya Luna, calls her Oyabun. Oyaibun. Oyaibun. <laughs> Big boss. Probably pronounced that terribly. Many of your fans in Japan compare her with Mirai Akari, but in other places they compare her with Kaguya Luna. She is known to be comically bad at video games, often to the entertainment of her viewers. She, she often remarks that she is poor and can't afford a lot of video games, even though she would like to play them. She considers her clothes to be a part of her body, and she is a virtual entity. Because of this, she considers herself to be 
something all the time that I can't say. I'm going to have to redact that word. Dang it. She was the first VTuber to have a verified Twitter account. Viewers have noted the strong resemblance of her voice to Kazuga Nozomi. And cut off, it says, Since 2018, Kazuna AI is the host of a TV show for the Japanese network Nippon TV. She hosted the show Kazuna AI No Beat Scramble. And now she is the face of the show Nabongumi. AI will sing the main theme of the animated movie Laidbackers, the song Precious Peace. Laidbackers will be released on April 5th, 2019. And lastly, AI will debut her first album called Hello World on May 15th, 2019. Well, that already happened. The album will include her singles, Sans, I guess that should say and maybe, and her collaboration song with W&W The Light. And the DVD version will include the recording of her live show at the Zep Osaka Bayside. Also, her singles will be released separately on CD. Sounds like she is a very busy VTuber indeed. How could I forget this one? She was one of the first VTubers to have a verified Twitter account. I missed that one. Look at that. So Kazuna is a blue check mark. Make of that what you will. Wrapping this video up now, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please comment down below your thoughts on this article, this write-up, etc., etc. Like the video, share the video. All that stuff absolutely helps. And if you would like to do a bit more, we have a Patreon and a Teespring, aka merch store. Links all in the description for that. And shouts out to the people who promoted the last video on Twitter. Thank you, KJ Collins, Random Fandom, DXDKJ, Ambipass Studio, The Lancaster Kid, Nicholas Horton, Coden X, Dusk Wolf, Cornbread Man, Drac Caprico, Battle Maid, Ollie Wooly Gaming, 13th Honey Badger, Wrecked by West Nile Virus, Intimidator 108, Skelly Kitty. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you next time.